Okay, you guys, Canva just had their annual Canva Create event where they announced a ton of new features as well as what they're calling the Canva Glow Up. That's right, they've given the Canva homepage and editor a whole new look and redesigned things in a pretty significant way. So I've gone through all the new features and updates and compiled the top eight that I think are gonna be super useful for you, especially if you're someone who's wanting to make money online working from home. Now I do wanna note that Canva is slowly rolling out these new features to everyone, so just be patient. If you look in your Canva account and you don't see one or two of these, you'll definitely be receiving it at some point soon. Also, some of these features are available to everyone, whether you use the Canva free or Canva a pro plan, but some of them are Canva pro only features, which means you'll only have access to them if you are on a Canva pro plan. And I'm guessing if you haven't yet tried Canva pro, you might want to give it a try after looking at all of these amazing new capabilities. So if that's the case, I have a free 30 day Canva pro trial linked in the video description box below that you can grab, try it out free for 30 days. And if you decide after that, you'd like to stay on a Canva pro plan and continue using it, then our channel gets a small commission off of that, which we are super grateful for. It doesn't cost any more for you, but it is just a small way that you can help support our channel. So let's get started by taking a look at the new Canva glow up. Okay, so the first part of the glow up is happening here on the Canva homepage. It looks a little bit different. It just looks a little bit more streamlined and cleaned up, not quite as many things to look at right when you get on the homepage. We can see we still have our little icons here at the top to click through on starting different types of projects. And we've still got our recent design showing here on the main page. But you can see where you would click to create a design normally would be up here in the right hand corner. That's no longer there. It's now moved over here to the left. Left, and this is a whole new sidebar here on the left side. So if we go all the way to the left, we can still see our icons that were there before as far as clicking through to projects or templates or your brand kit. So that's pretty much the same as it was before all the way on the left. But this new sidebar is a completely brand new feature that allows you to just organize and customize your homepage experience a little bit further. So we've got this create a design button at the top, which is the exact same that it was when you would click before to create a new design. We've also got an invite people button. So Canva's wanting us to invite people to join. And we've also got here for the new glove, a see what's changed area so that you can use this when you're just getting used to this new look to look through and see what is new, what's changed. But the main part about this that I wanna point out are these different sections here below. So we've got different sections that we can organize things in, everything from our projects that we've starred for ourselves or for our team. We've got recent designs, but we can actually create in our own sections by clicking this little plus button here that says create section and that'll allow me to name a new section so let's say I'm working on a specific project that I want to just temporarily have easy access to over on the side where I could say coaching week maybe that's a project I'm working on and then I can move specific projects or even folders into this main coaching week section so that I'm not having to search for this I can easily just hop on canva go straight to my section and click through on what I need to work on now like I mentioned before I've already got some things starred and starred for for my team. So if you have a team, you can star things and it'll apply for everyone in your team and show up there on their accounts as well. And the way that I do that is just to go to one of my projects, hover over the three dots here and click on star for team. When you either star for yourself here with the star or click on star for team, it'll automatically add it to those sections. All right, so let's take a look now at the editor. So we're here in the editor and things just look a lot cleaner, a lot more streamlined. You can see that this far left menu is similar to what we were used to seeing before with the different options here that we can click on. But you can see the main difference here is that when I'm not clicking on something specifically, all I I can see are these icons when I hover over them it brings out the expanded sidebar which then automatically collapses back to the left when I come over here if I haven't clicked on it if I want it to stay out I can come over to one of the let's say the text section and click on it and that'll keep my sidebar pulled out so I can work within this menu I can click this X button at the top again if I want to go ahead and get rid of that again you can also see that this side menu used to have a black background now it's a white background but other than that it's a pretty similar layout to what we had before just with the addition of some new features. Now another change here is that you'll see there's no pinned menu to the top. We're used to seeing some options here at the top for editing things like text and photos and graphics. So when I don't have anything in my project selected, I'm not gonna see any menu here at the top. If I select something like a photo, then it'll bring up a floating toolbar. So this is a bit different than the one that used to be pinned to the top. This is a floating toolbar that's going to be suggesting some of the main edits and different tools that I might be using for the thing I have selected. So since I have a photo selected, it's suggesting I could click through to edit that photo. I could do a one-click background remover, which is really nice that that's there at the top now. All of these different options, but if I don't see the option I need, I can click on these little arrows 
arrows to expand this bar over to the right. So this is similar to what we had before that we used to see here on the left. Now it expands over here to the right, but we can see a lot of the things that we're familiar with, like filters, effects. Now one really awesome new addition to specifically the photo menu here. So remember I have my photo selected. This is the photo menu that I've clicked to expand. Now there's an apps section. So it's going to recommend different apps that are relevant for the thing I have selected. So these are apps that I could use with a photo. So I've got a mock-up app, an image upscaler, colorize, pixelify, blend, which is a new one we'll talk about in just a minute, and color mix. So this is a new addition to easily have quick access to any apps I might need to work with this photo. So let's say I want to work with some text. I'm going to select my text. And again, the floating toolbar pops up and you can see the options are different this time. It's suggesting some different things for text, like magic write options. So for instance, if I wanted to rewrite this using Canvas AI, I can do things like shorten it up, improve it, change the voice and the way it sounds, fix the spelling. So I can do all that easily from here on the top floating toolbar. But again, I can click to expand this with these arrows and work further with the options in the menu here to the right. Okay, so those are the main changes for the Canva Glow Up, but now let's talk about these top eight features that I think are gonna be super useful for you, especially as an entrepreneur working from home. Some of these are brand new features that Canva just introduced. Some of them are features that have been around for a little bit, but Canva introduced an upgrade or a new addition to make that tool or feature better. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the new Blend app. This is a brand new app called Blend, and what it's basically going to do is use AI to merge or blend two different photos together. So what you're going to want to do is choose the two photos that you want to blend together. Let me zoom in here a little bit so we can see. So I've chosen this scene of a beach and I want to add these beach chairs and umbrella to make it look like they are actually sitting on this beach instead of the one that this picture is showing. So I'm going to want to go ahead and add both of these photos to my project and make this secondary photo about the right size for the photo. So this seems to be about the right size that I would need these beach chairs and umbrella to be looking realistic sitting on this beach. So I'm going to go ahead and place these where I want them on the beach. And then I'm going to start out here where I don't have either of these photos just in the white space and I'm going to click and drag to select both photos and once they're both selected then I'm going to click to expand to my right side menu and I can see right here I've got the app blend suggested so I can go ahead and click on blend and then select blend images. This is now going to use Canvas AI to go ahead and blend those images together into one image and it's going to give me a couple different options here. Okay so we can now click through these four different options that have just slight variations in the way the chairs and the umbrella look and I can even zoom in a little closer if I want to see which one looks most realistic here. So I can just click through these. That one's a little strange on the right chair. This one looks a lot more realistic. And I feel like the rest of these actually look pretty good. I think the best one is either this one or this one. So I can choose which one I want to go with. I think I'm gonna go with this one and click done. So the purpose of this blend app is just to make it look more realistic. I know sometimes we could have the option of taking a photo like that beach chair photo, removing the background and just layering it on top of a secondary photo. But a lot of times it just looks a little strange. It doesn't quite look like it belongs with the background. So this is a step in the right direction in terms of being able to just make them look like they really belong together and they really are one photo. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about Magic Media, which is not a new feature. Magic Media has been around for a little while. This is Canva's AI tool that'll let you generate a photo or a video, but the new update to Magic Media is that now we can generate a graphic element. So to do this, we're going to come over on the left hand side to our elements menu and we're going to scroll down to AI image generator and click generate your own. And this brings us to Magic Media where before we only had the option for images or videos. Now we can see there's an option for graphics. So for those of us that are using illustrations or graphic elements that are not photos or videos in our content or our products, this is gonna be so useful. So to generate a new graphic, I can give the AI a prompt describing what I want. So for this, I'm just gonna say a pink and red peony flower with leaves. Then I can come down here to styles and choose what style I want. So right now there are several different options under categories of simple, artistic, and detailed. So I think first, let's go ahead and try the hand-drawn. I'm gonna click generate graphics. And again, this is going to use AI to generate a few different options of this graphic for me. And then I can choose the one I like best. All right, so these are the four options for the flowers it generated for me. So if I like one of these, I can click to add it to my canvas. And if not, I could try it generate again, or I can try it in a different style. So for this time, let's try it again. And I'm really interested to see what this 3D Chrome is gonna look like. So I'm gonna just leave the same prompt and choose 3D Chrome and click generate again. And now it's generated these four different options 
things in a 3D chrome style. So I think these look really amazing and I think it's really nice that there are so many different styles they can choose from to fit what kind of look you're going for. All right, let's move on to our next feature, which is Magic Grab. So again, this is not a new tool to Canva, but there's been a major update and upgrade to this feature. So let's take a look. So let's say I wanna use the Magic Grab tool on a photo. I can select my photo. I'm gonna to click to expand to the right side menu here. And I can see under the Magic Studio section, I've got the option for Magic Grab. When I click on that, before I was only able to brush over a specific part of the photo that I wanted to grab and remove from the photo, but now there's a new feature called Click. So this automatically just lets me hover over something that I want to use Magic Grab for and click on it instead of having to brush over it myself. And it automatically can tell where that object starts and ends. And I can use the click feature to select more than one image that I want to remove from this photo. So let's say here, I wanna grab this coffee cup and the stapler. Those are the two things I have selected. I'm gonna click grab. And again, this is gonna use Canva's AI to automatically remove those parts of the image for me so that I can then click and move them around either on that photo or I could even bring them onto a new photo. I can also work with this to resize however I want and continue editing from there. Now I've got a similar update with the grab text feature. So Magic Grab is a little bit different than Grab Text, but they're similar. This one just works specifically with text that's in a photo. So for instance, with this photo, I can see this text that's on the tote bag. All I can do is click to select the whole photo itself to edit. I can't click on the text necessarily to edit anything because it's already part of this photo. So what I can do with Grab Text is again, click on the photo, come over to my right side menu. I'm going to scroll over under Magic Studio to where it says Grab Text. So again, here the new capability is that I can actually select just one piece of one of these text before with grab text, it would just select all of it. And I didn't really have an option to separate the different parts of text. So if I wanted to leave, let's say parts of this, but I wanted to change only this shopping simplified part, I can select just that one line of text and grab that text to then be able to edit further. So now you can see I can actually click on that one piece of text and move it around. Now it does look at a, a little bit different because Canva has actually made this now an editable text field. So I can go in, change what this says, change the font or the size, really do anything I want with that line of text. It's matched the original font as close as it can, but I can then come in and do whatever I'd like with this piece of text. All right, we're about to move on to our next feature, which is really fun. But if you're finding value in this video, I'd be so grateful if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, why are you waiting? Go ahead and subscribe. We gave tons of free, valuable information that you can use for your online business each and every week. And I'd be super excited to have you as part of our community. All right, the next update we're talking about is in the mock-up app. So again, we're familiar with the mockups app, but they've upgraded it and made it so much better. So one of the really cool things now with mockups is that you don't have to use just a photographic image. You can actually create a mockup with a graphic element. So I have this graphic element of this sun selected. I'm going to come over here to my right side menu and click on mockups. And you'll see when I select the mockup I want, it's going to be able to use it even though it's a graphic image. Before we only had the option of using actual photos for mockups. And the second update to this mockup app is that they've introduced mock-up videos. So not just photos, but actual video mock-ups that are really cool. So let's take a look at maybe this tote bag video and put the sun on the tote bag video. All right, here's our video. So I'm going to click to play this so we can see what this looks like. You can see her moving around a little bit. The sun looks great. It's moving with the tote bag. So this is just so cool. This is gonna just up-level your mock-up game for sure, being able to use both photos and videos and being able to put graphic images, not just photographic images on your mock-ups. Now, real quick, before we move on to the next feature, I have something I wanna give you that I think is gonna be super useful for you, especially if you are someone who's wanting to make money working from home. I've got a free digital product starter guide that's gonna give you all the basics, all the foundational information you need to know to get started creating digital products. So these are things like what types of digital products are out there, what softwares and tools can you use to create digital products, where to source different graphic elements to create with. We talk all about sizing and resolution. So there's just so much value in that guide. I know it's going to be super useful for you if you are wanting to be a digital product seller. So I have that free guide linked in the description box below. You can grab that right after you finish watching this video. All right, the next two updates we're going to talk about both have to do with videos on Canva. So if you're not familiar, you can actually do a lot of things with videos to create different types of videos, specifically short vertical videos for things like Instagram Reels or TikTok 
TikTok or YouTube Shorts. So some of the video capabilities have been around for a while, but there are some really fun updates to editing your videos now. So I've just uploaded this short video of myself. I recorded this for one of our recent course launches where I was talking about something to do with the course. So I'm gonna show you both of these new video updates using this video. So the first one is an audio option. I'm gonna come up here on this floating toolbar to audio. And now I can see I have the option for enhanced voice. So if I select this option, it's going to automatically give my audio, specifically my voice audio, a better sound. So this is really useful if I had to record in a place that was really noisy or I had some background noise that came in, or if it just feels a little bit like the audio is not great quality, this is going to automatically enhance the sound of the audio and improve it to make it better. And then the other new thing I can do with a video is use Canvas AI to automatically select highlights. So this is really useful if I have a longer form video that I'm wanting to repurpose and clip up into little shorter clips for things again like reels or TikToks. Then I can just select my video and come up here to the little scissors where it says trim. And now I've got the option for auto trim and highlights. These are both new. Auto trim is a little bit different, but I'm going to talk specifically about this highlights feature. So when I click on highlights, it's going to take my whole video and automatically it's going to be able to tell which parts are the highlights of the video and suggest to me different key clips of that video that I could use as individual shorter videos. So I can see here now on the right, it suggested four different clips from the video. It tells me what that clip was about. So here I've got introduction to Etsy success coaching week, which is what I was talking about. So that's the intro challenges faced by Etsy sellers. That's a part of what I was talking about. Details of the free workshop and benefits and registration information. So it's automatically being able to tell what I'm talking about and breaking it up into highlights. It tells me where exactly in the video that highlight's coming from, and then I can click through on each one to start watching through. And let's say I only want to add these first two. I can select those and click add selection to design. And now it has duplicated in my project two different pages, each with their own highlight that I can work with. Okay, next up is a brand new feature that Canva just introduced, and this is work kits. So to access the work kits, we're gonna come back to our homepage and click over on the left side where it says templates. And now in the templates section at the top, you'll see where it says introducing work kits, and we've got four different specific work kits one for marketing, one for sales, one for human resources, and one for creative. So these are basically just different groups of templates that are specific for people in those fields. So maybe I have a team that works in HR and I need templates for different things in my workflow. Let's take a look here at the marketing work kit. So when I click on marketing, it'll show me different categories like templates under campaign management, lifecycle marketing, social media, go to market strategy, campaign assets. And these are all different types of Canva templates, everything from presentations I could use to social media posts, templates, to charts and graphs and tracker documents, report documents, campaign brief documents. And they also integrate with some of the most popular apps these types of teams are using. So under the marketing teams app, we can integrate with Asana, Monday.com, Later, Slack. All of these are able to be integrated with inside of Canva, which is gonna make your whole work flow so much more streamlined. All right, friends, well, that's a wrap for the new Canva Glow Up and the top eight features that Canva just announced that I think are gonna be super helpful for you. Don't forget to click the links below for both your free Canva Pro trial. That'll give you Canva Pro for free for 30 days to try out some of these features and see if you think it might be a good fit for your business. And also for that free digital product starter guide that's gonna give you everything you need to know to get started creating and selling digital products online. Talk soon, friends.